everybody. Welcome to Phil and Dave's Excellent Adventures. Just Dave here. Today I'm talking about the movie Wonka. This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you are concerned about spoilers, I would suggest you go and watch the movie first before you watch this review. So Wonka is a new movie about the sort of origins of uh, the character of Willy Wonka. Um, basically, he arrives in, I don't know, England in the early 1930s and uh, is trying to set up his, uh, his, his chocolate store um, and dealing with the kind of corporate overlords that are, are already running that space. So as far as what I liked about the movie, Timothy Chalamet as Wonka did a good job. I liked Cal Lane as Noodle. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key as the unnamed uh, captain of the police or chief of police was was fun. I liked him as well. Uh, I liked Patterson Joseph as Arthur Slugworth. I know him from uh, Peep Show, and a lot of people from Peep Show show up on this, so that was cool to see him. Matt Lukes, of course, from the Mighty Boosh. A lot of Mighty Boosh people are involved in this too. Uh, Matthew Bainton, who I'm only somewhat familiar with, but he was really funny. All, they were the three sort of chocolatiers who run this kind of chocolate cartel. They're all just really funny, just over the top and goofy and ridiculous. And I love that the bad guys are, you know, these kind of corporate uh, people. Um, I really liked uh, Rich Fulcher as Larry Chucklesworth. It was weird to see him in here because I know him from like drunk history and stuff. I'm like, what? What's he doing here? But uh, good for him. Uh, Sally Hawkins, of course, always great. She was in the first Paddington, uh, first two Paddington movies. Um, she plays Willy Wonka's mom. Rowan Atkinson is always funny. I saw this movie with my niece, and as soon as he came on screen, she started laughing immediately, which is pretty pretty good. I, I assume she knows it from Mr. Bean, uh, but uh, yeah, good stuff there. Olivia Coleman, of course, always great. Uh, again, from Peep Show, but a bunch of other things. She won an Oscar couple years ago for something i i don't think i ever saw it but uh yeah she's always great it was funny to see her doing like a cockney kind of accent and playing this kind of low class character when in real life you know she's very kind of uh refined um i liked uh thomas davis i'm sorry tom davis is bleacher um he's just so funny he's got that deep coat of loud voice and i'm like oh my god this guy is hilarious and the, he's got a lot of really funny scenes and i really like their interactions together um and then hugh grant i mean god hugh grant as the umpa lumpa is so damn funny just he's i think he's got four or five scenes in the movie but he is just hilarious and every single scene just the stuff he says he makes little faces that are funny he's he is he's my favorite part of the movie by far he is so good in this i, I loved hugh grant in this he's yeah awesome um i really like the score that was by uh, jody talbot and neil hannon uh they've worked together before but jody talbot i'm sorry joby talbot uh he did the score for hitchhiker's guy of the galaxy and son of rambo both movies that i enjoyed um neil hannon is a musician and an actor i think but he did uh theme tunes for uh father ted and the it crowd so yeah good for them Oh, he's also in a band, uh, the uh, Divine Comedy, I think it's called. I'm not familiar with them, no. Uh, cinematography, this is great. It was uh, Chung Chung Hoon, who did uh, Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl, Uncharted, um, some other stuff that is probably actually a better indication uh, of, of his skills. But yeah, it looked really great. I really like the opening in this, uh, when, when he starts uh, singing and he's got like 12 uh, shillings or something like that. And then as he goes on, he keeps losing more and more shillings. Like that was really funny. He, he gives one to the you know woman who's got a baby so she can get a, a room. And then he flips his last one up in the sky and you see the grate and you know it's going to fall in the grate. And it does. And that's hilarious but it's a great way to set the scene and to kind of set the movie and to get it going. Um, I really like the Oompa Loompa song. I'm glad they put it in there. They changed the lyrics, um, but yeah, they put it in there twice and that's really great. I thought the movie was really, really funny. Like I said, the stuff with Bleacher and Miss Scrub It was so good. The part where he comes out in like the later hosen and he's trying to be sexy is so funny. Um, the, the, the part at the beginning where uh, Willie starts daydreaming and Keegan-Michael Key is like, you know, finds him for doing it because there's that sign you saw it in the trailer. Uh, that was really funny. I just uh, a lot of that stuff that actually that part in the trailer is what made me go like, oh, OK, this could be good. And then realizing it was Paul King, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to watch this. He's great. Um, it's very sweet. It's very wholesome. It's very family friendly. Um, I really appreciated that. There's a lot of just, you know, just nice little moments. Uh, there's also, it's kind of goofy and silly, but not really in a bad way. Like there's stuff like, again, all, all of the, the chocolate cartel guys are just so over the top and ridiculous. At one point, Matt Lucas like goes cross-eyed when he says one of his lines. And the other guy uh, is just like making faces the whole time. And uh, it's just really funny. They try to like drown them in like hundreds of gallons of chocolate, which is absurd, <laughs> but so ridiculous and over the top. I really appreciated it. Um, there's a lot of just cute little funny moments like they see the flamingos at the zoo and um, the girl's like, oh, why don't they fly? And Willie's like, oh, maybe no one ever showed him. And of course, 
they fly away and the flamingos see them and they fly away too. That's great. Um, there's just a lot of cute little moments like that. I like that reading is involved, you know, because at first it's like, oh, we didn't read the five prints. I'm like, oh, God, that's been used so many times. That was in every cartoon in the 80s had that plot point. But he can't read. And that's kind of a, a, a part to the movie. And he ends up learning how to read throughout the movie. And the fact that he did learn how to read, you know, kind of ends up saving them. So, like, that's great. Uh, I really appreciated that. I love reading. Um, I love that Willie keeps his promises, you know, like he he told, I can't remember anyone's name, uh, Noodle, he told Noodle he would give her, uh, you know, lifetime supply of chocolate every day or whatever, or as much chocolate as she could eat every day. And first day he gives her the chocolate and she's like, what's this? And he's like, well, I made a promise. I got to, got to keep my promise, you know? Um, I like that he helps his friends. Like at some point toward the end, uh, he agrees to, you know, go to Antarctica or whatever it is, the North Pole. Uh, and, and, you know, but that way he gets his friends, you know, free from their contracts. That's great. I really appreciated that. Um, I like that there was no romance in here. There easily could have been. They easily could have made Noodle a little bit older, or they could have had, uh, you know, the other girl whose name I don't remember, Lottie, I think. They could have had a romance with Willie and Lolly, Lottie, but they didn't do that. They, and they didn't need to. And I appreciate that. It's nice to sometimes just have a movie where, I mean, there is romance with other characters, but where the main character isn't in any kind of, you know, there is no love interest for them. And the friendships are just platonic and nice. I, I really appreciated that. Um, there's there's a part with a couple who like uh, I think the guy's about to propose, but then you know the woman's like you know oh you know I want a guy to take charge, and he's like oh that's not me. Um, that was great because it's Phil Wang and uh, Charlotte Ritchie. I know them both from Taskmaster. There's a bunch of Taskmaster people who show up on this one as well. Um, I, I love Taskmaster, so that's great. Um, I like that everybody gets what they want pretty much, and not not everybody. The, the chocolate cartel kind of get their comeuppance, and uh, Scrub it and Bleacher end up going to jail. But everyone else, pretty much, they get what they want. They get to go back home with their families. They get to you know, achieve their dreams. They get to go on. Like that's really great, really nice, and I appreciate that. Um, I really like the part where they uh, they share the chocolate bar which apparently he's had for 20 years or 15 years or whatever but it's nice there's six pieces there's six of them they break it up and give it up that was really nice the moment with his mom was cute um i like that he did sing pure imagination i think if they didn't sing pure imagination people would have been you know rightfully pretty upset and confused but not doing it because that's the song i think that everyone loves from the, the movie um and i like the end credits they have the oompa loompa come back out hugh grant and he, he gives you a little you know kind of uh thing to tell to explain what happens to the characters that's great um, and I, I love that there's essentially a happy ending. You know, everyone kind of gets what they want. Even Willie got to see his mom again, even though I guess it was just in his imagination. But either way, it was great. Very cute. Very nice. Um, as far as what I didn't like about it, um, Timothy Chalamet, I'm not a huge fan of. I think I've only seen him in Dune. I, I know women seem to like him. Um, some of these women seem to be way too old to be liking this child as much as they do. But uh, that's, uh, I don't know, either way. Um, but I thought he was fine. I thought he was pretty good. But I thought I, I wanted him to be a little more like unhinged or a little crazier. And it's a very nice, sweet movie. But like there's a point where he's like describing the Oompa Loompa and how he wants to like track him down and get him. And I feel like if he would have just played that up a little bit more, just went a little over the top in like a couple scenes like that or gave him a little bit of, a, of an edge to him, a little bit of a, of a dangerousness where even though it's a nice, sweet family movie, there was still a little like, oh, this this guy is kind of crazy. Like, OK, I don't know. And his singing was fine. I think it was mostly good. I like the song he did at the beginning and some of the other songs, but I don't know, pure imagination. He didn't sing it as well as Gene Wilder or Lou Rawls or whoever. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, and Callum Lane is noodle. She did fine. I think her singing was very good, but her acting was not terrible, but there was at least a couple parts where I'm like, all right, this is, you know, I, I, I'm aware I'm watching a movie right now. Um, there's some really bad CGI in here. Uh, the flying candy, you know, toward the beginning looks like obvious CGI, um, all the machinery they have in there, again, just looks very fake and cartoonish. Um, the giraffe, the giraffe actually looks pretty good up close when they show its face, but in movement and its actual body to me looked very fake. And of course, it's safer and cheaper to do it that way. But just, you know, one thing that stuck out to me, the fine print thing, like I said, I've just seen that so many times, but I did appreciate that it is important and it comes back. So I like that. Um, I don't like musicals and I didn't realize this was a musical. I probably should have. And the original is basically a musical i guess I, I just kind of forget that i think we all kind of forget that the original is a musical um but yeah once the movie starts and he starts singing i'm like wait a minute is this a musical damn it just like hunger games again <laughs> that makes it though I actually I, I like this a lot more um but i didn't like all the songs you know they, they mostly have new songs except for the oompa loompa one and the pure imagination song um some of them i liked i, I liked like i said the beginning one um but some i didn't like as much like the kind of washing up song they do at uh, the scrubbit's place or when he first opens the shop and he does his song i didn't love that song either and i didn't love his singing in that 
Uh, there's a lot of fat jokes involving Keegan Michael Key's character that didn't really bother me, but seemed, seemed a little out of place in like a kid's movie and just uh, in a movie from 2023 to be like making fun of someone for being fat. Now, granted, it happens in the context of the movie and it's because he's greedy and he keeps getting bribed with chocolate and stuff. But I don't know, something about it that was just a, a little, little bit of a sour note for me. Um, do Willie's treats not work on him? Because they sabotage his treats and then people start growing crazy fit, like hair and stuff. But then he eats one and he's fine. So I'm like, wait, what does... Is he immune to, I, I don't, okay. And there, there's a, a fair amount of like plot points or just uh, plot holes that don't make sense. Like there's one point where like uh, the Oompa Loompa steals all of his chocolate and then next thing he's got chocolate. And my niece is like, I thought the Oompa Loompa took all his chocolate. And I, he made more, whatever, you know, but there's definitely a lot of stuff that doesn't quite add up where you're like, well, wait, that doesn't, but whatever, it's a kid's movie. I'm not going to get too mad about that. Um, Miss Scrub and Bleacher, I really like their um, their characters, and I really liked what happens and the way they kind of had this romance. And I liked that they did end up together at the end. But I was really hoping that their like love for each other would make it so that they weren't so greedy and they would just like absolve all the people of their debts. Maybe that wouldn't have made as much sense, and it would have you know changed the plot of the movie a little bit. But I don't know. I, I just wanted that nice wholesome like oh love you know kind of gives you your thing. I, I think I just I expected that to happen, and when it didn't, I was a little disappointed. And I do think, like you said, the movie is very sweet and it's very wholesome and I enjoyed it and I really loved it, but maybe it's a little too sweet. Maybe it's a little too wholesome. And I say that just because the original 1971 movie uh, with Gene Wilder is, you know, there's there's a cynicism to it. There's a, there's a meanness to it. You know, like Willie like yells at, at uh, Charlie, you know, I said good day, sir, and all that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just, I, I feel like maybe this one, this Willy Wonka seems like a very different character than the other Willy Wonkas we've seen, especially from the Johnny Depp one who kind of actively disliked children. So, and I can see how some people wouldn't like this characterization of Willy Wonka compared to what we've seen in the past. And I can't imagine this guy becoming the guy from the 1971 movie. Not, not that he's supposed to, but just seems like a very different uh, character in a lot of ways. So other than that movie is directed by Paul King. He did Paddington 1 and 2. He also did some episodes of Space Force and The Mighty Boosh. Uh, it was written by Paul King and uh, Simon Barnaby. Uh, Simon Farnaby is an actor. He, I think, created the show Ghosts, the UK one. Uh, he was also in Paddington 2, or he wrote Paddington 2. Uh, he was in this movie. He's the zoo guard, I think. Um, he's writing the upcoming Paddington in Peru. And, of course, this is based on the character from the Roald Dahl books, although not much, really. Um, budget on this, $125 million. Uh, it's made $151 million so far, so pretty good. Uh, $39 million of that was domestic. Uh, the biggest uh, opening for a musical post-pandemic, I believe. So eh, good for them. It sounds like they should hopefully be able to make their money back. Maybe we'll see. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes in this is pretty good. 84% for the critics, 91% for the audience. So I mean, people people are liking this, especially the audience. Um, Tom Holland was up for Wonka at some point. It was between the two of them, I guess. And Chalamet got it. It would have been interesting with Tom Holland. I don't, I don't think I've heard him sing, but I know he does the lip sync battles and people love those. And I like Tom Holland. I think he's a good actor. I like him as Spider-Man. So i have been curious to see it. Um, apparently Chalamet got sick multiple times during the production uh, because he just ate so much chocolate and candy. Uh, Paul King says he gained like 50 pounds. I assume he's exaggerating, but uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of peep show people in here. Um, the, the, the one guy, uh, the chocolate guy, uh, Olivia Coleman was on peep show. Uh, a bunch of people show up, a bunch of Taskmaster people show up. That's cool. Apparently this is supposed to be the first installment in the Roll Doll Cinematic Universe because everything has to have a cinematic universe now. So I don't know you know, how much I'm up for that. He did James and the Giant Peach, the BFG, the Witches. Uh, he's got plenty of books out there, and most of which have been adapted at least once already. But um, yeah, I don't think this ties into the Witches movie from a couple of years ago, but I didn't see that. So I had no idea. Um, and I did appreciate that they did the good day, sir. I said good day. Uh, I think both times the Oompa Loompa, Hugh Grant's character does it. I don't know if they did it the third time, but yeah, he did it first time he gets out of the glass and then he, he does it at the end too. That was great. Oh, and I really appreciated. it. When they're singing Pure Imagination, uh, first uh, Wonka does it for Noodle, I think, and then he does it for the Oompa Loompa, and he goes, come with me, and he goes, well, <laughs> and you will see what, <laughs> and it's just, I don't know, something about him doing that little, like, you know, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Bart Simpson kind of thing was just really funny to me, and I really appreciated it, so yeah, I thought this movie was great, I really, really liked it, I thought it, it hit that perfect note of kind of sweet and wholesome, without being over the top and treacly, uh, very much is what I expected from the guy who did um, Paddington 1 and 2, and I'm really looking forward to the new Paddington movie. Um, so I think my score on this is going to be a 9 out of 10. I, I really, really like this movie, even though it's a musical. And it, even as much as I love movies about like drugs and murder and sex and violence, um, I also just I like a good, wholesome family movie every once in a while. And I think that's that's what this was. So I really appreciate it.
But if you saw the movie, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great night. I will see you here again next week.